Hi, everyone. Um, I guess uh, some of you may not know Verint, and most of you would not uh, immediately associate Verint to cybersecurity. Uh, so uh, let me start by saying a few words about the company. In the last year, Verint has crossed the $1 billion revenue threshold. Uh, it has over 10,000 uh, customers in 180 countries, including 80% of the Fortune 100 companies uh, and uh, almost 5,000 employees worldwide. Verint has developed a strong, actionable intelligence platform with many security and business uses. Uh, actually, the words or the phrase actionable intelligence, which has become prevalent uh, in, in cyber, uh, recently is a registered uh, variant trademark. So if you use it too often, we offer, we uh, collect uh, royalties uh, in our booth, which is right outside here. Uh, in the last couple of years, we have harnessed the strengths and the capabilities of our actionable intelligence uh, platform uh, to address the growing challenge of cybersecurity. We have built a set of very unique, very innovative uh, solutions to protect both countries and organizations and achieved uh, um, sizable market uh, success, the uh, jewel of the crown being our big uh, cybersecurity project that we've won and announced of over $100 million a couple of months ago. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to discuss about our solution for national cybersecurity. Uh, obviously, no need to preach to the choir. We all understand the implication of uh, 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 a sophisticated cyber attack on uh, welfare of a nation. It's been mentioned a few times uh, in this uh, conference also. Uh, but before we go into the approach that we're proposing, let's uh, recap and understand how countries uh, protect themselves today. Well, a country first defines uh, uh, the critical organization. It wants to monitor and protect. Uh, it can be military, it can be law enforcement, uh, critical infrastructure like energy and water, uh, and so on can be dozens, maybe even hundreds of, of organizations. Uh, each such, such organization has already some kind of security setup with some solutions you already put in place, and it's usually orchestrated uh, by a SIEM, an event management system that collects all the information, analyzes them, and builds uh, a picture of the threats in the organization level. Uh, one problem, which I'll get back to later, is the fact that each such organization has a different set of uh, security solutions different policies, different SIM technology, different way of reporting the alerts, and I'll get back to that later. Uh, and in any case, uh, all these uh, SIMs uh, in, uh, then uh, funnel up to a national security operations center, a national SOC or a CSOC, which collects all the information from all the local SIMs and tries to build a picture of the threat in the national level. Uh, this approach definitely has value. Uh, but we believe it also has some inherent shortcomings which prevent it from being uh, the main and definitely not the only solution for national cyber defense. Uh, when we, because first, uh, by definition, this approach sees only part of the picture, right? It sees only what's going on within the, uh, this critical monitored organization. It doesn't see everything that's going on within the uh, national cyber sphere. Second, uh, it's very hard, complex, expensive to uh, really build uh, a system that will integrate the inputs coming from all these dozens or hundreds of uh, uh, seams, again, each with his own setup, technologies, reporting mechanisms, policies, uh, to, to create a single picture. It also has a lot of bureaucratic uh, challenges. Uh, and even if you manage to do that effectively, uh, since the uh, threats evolve and emerge all the time, to keep everyone in sync and aligned all the time in this distributed array is virtually impossible. But to add to that, there are uh, a bunch of semi-critical organizations like food supply chain or like uh, manufacturing sites with uh, hazardous chemicals stored in them, uh, which uh, attacking them will have an implication in the national uh, level, uh, but they're not covered. And more so, the segregation between the uh, um, monitored uh, organization and this semi-critical organization is rigid. Uh, if, you, if you get a, an intelligence alert uh, that someone is going to attack, for example, the biggest pharmaceutical company in the country, and you want to uh, connect it as a monitored organization and have it report to the, to the CSOC, it will take you months to complete this project, and the attacker may not wait 
until you complete this project, obviously. So we try to see what we can do uh, uh, to, to help uh, solve some of these inherent uh, uh, problems. Uh, instead of trying to incrementally improve this approach, we try to take a different approach altogether, like President Perez told us, said this morning, don't climb a ladder, take a flight. Uh, right? So we took another approach altogether, we call it the network, the network backbone approach. In this approach, uh, we uh, put systems within the internet service providers, the ISPs. Uh, these systems monitor and collect all the data that's going back and forth within the national cyberspace. This data is collected, uh, analyzed, checked for malware, uh, and sent to a central site where it can be uh, further investigated with more sophisticated tool that will include, for example, analysis of the evolution of the malware over time. Uh, with this approach, you get by definition full coverage of the national cyberspace uh, because you see everything that's going on. You have direct access to the data, uh, not only to this part of the data which is filtered and processed by the local scenes, and uh, as we'll demonstrate in a minute, uh, you can get uh, very significant insights about the scope, the context, and uh, the way to deal with uh, the attacks during and sometimes even before an attack actually uh, takes place. To prevent it from staying in the marketing slogan level, uh, I will uh, uh, show a few use cases uh, demonstrating this. Uh, the advantage of this approach. Uh, first example, there's a malware in the Department of Defense. Uh, maybe reported to the National SOC, maybe not. Uh, but the National SOC can't do too much about it and, and know what to do with it. The problem is this can be one of two very different scenarios. In the first scenario, maybe a DOD computer was infected, but it's part of a wide infection of many computers within the National uh, cyberspace, including homes and non-critical organizations, in which case it's obviously need to be cleaned and fixed, but maybe not a very important incident. The second scenario, which is much more severe, is if this malware appears only on the on the con computers and nowhere else within the cyberspace. That may indicate that this is a targeted attack trying to uh, um, steal information from the DoD or create some damage, and obviously the implication and the way to deal with it are very different. And uh, the uh, traditional scene based approach cannot distinguish between the two, right? Because it sees only the DOD, not the rest of the cyberspace. Uh, the, the network backbone approach obviously can uh, see the, the difference between these two scenarios and uh, give insightful information who is infected, who is targeted, and, and what can we do about it. Second uh, scenario is about attack on utility networks. The utility networks uh, have, uh, um, as, as we all know, uh, specific protocols, SCADA protocols, that are used mostly by critical infrastructure or other operational uh, networks. Uh, most of these devices are not connected to the, to the Internet. Some do. And if someone wants to attack this network through the Internet, he will try to first to locate, uh, um, to locate these devices in the, in the Internet. The way we'll try to do it is to have a wide search over a range of IP addresses using these SCADA protocols, right? And it tries to reach each one of them. If it reaches my home computer, it will get no answer. But if it uh, reaches uh, uh, a device that answers it, probably is a network that is of interest and may be the starting point of its penetration to the critical utility uh, network. Uh, obviously, this type of search, uh, wide search in, with using SCADA protocols is not done for any benign reasons. And if someone's doing it, he has bad intention in mind. Uh, the network backbone approach, because it sees everything that's going on in the, in the Internet, can identify this search, uh, understand what parameters uh, it's using, and based on that, give some insight as to who is looking, what are they looking for, uh, did they find something, did they already penetrate or not, and give the alerts to the SOC who can, along with the utility uh, seam, try to... Uh, block uh, the, the vulnerability or the exploit if there is one and stop this attack before it even happens. Uh, same for DDoS. DDoS also has some preparatory phases. Uh, even if the attack comes from outside the country, it will usually recruit resources and infect uh, computers within the country to create the volume to make this uh, attack effective. Uh, later, it will design the strategy based on the computers that they infected, recruit 
uh, uh, give the marching orders to the, uh, to the infected computers and only then the attack takes place. Here also, uh, the network backbone approach sees all these preparatory phases, understand what's happening, that the attack is coming, who is the target, how is the attack built, and based on that, uh, t uh, enable the CSOC to take some uh, countermeasures to limit the impact of this attack uh, once it happens and definitely prepare better for the next attack. These are just a few examples out of many uh, use cases that we have to show the, uh, the ability of this approach to give a comprehensive, uh, insightful uh, information about uh, attacks and, and, and malware in the national cyberspace. Uh, Variant has built this solution and supplies it to our customers based on a set of assets that uh, were built in Variant that are very rare to find under a single roof because to do that, you need to have uh, deep traffic inspection capabilities where we arguably have the strongest nation-grade uh, IP probe in the industry. You need advanced malware engines where we have a range of en uh, strong engines that we've either built or acquired over the last couple of years, including, by the way, uh, the file and memory analysis capabilities that we've uh, uh, gained through the acquisition of a Taiwanese company with uh, uh, a lot of exposure, exposure to Chinese hackers. So if uh, Colonel Hackstad is still here, yes, Verin does speak Chinese. Uh, you need to have the mass data collection to collect all these petabytes of data and put it in order, to be, in order to be used. And obviously the big data analysis platform uh, to take all this huge amount of data, analyze it, and get to the necessary insight. Uh, we put all that in action uh, to help our customers uh, achieve effective uh, national cybersecurity. Hope you found it interesting, and thank you very much for your time.